Ok, ok. Já estamos com a nossa querida Anika aguardando aqui para o nosso bate-papo, né? E eu quero que vocês recebam a Anika Yars. Ela é representante do Startup Estônia. Ela trabalha agora com a parte de Global Talents. Ela era meio community manager, agora trabalha com, com Global Talents no Startup Estônia. E ela vai contar um pouquinho para a gente como que funciona esse trabalho dela no Startup Estônia, o que ela faz, o que ela deixa de fazer, como ela chegou e o que o Startup Estônia tem como proposta. Vocês estão livres para mandar suas perguntas, tá? Eu vou tentar acompanhar aqui no chat, conforme for acontecendo, eu vou puxando as perguntas e fazendo para ela. A, a, esse bate-papo, ele será em inglês, tá? Porque, obviamente, estamos aqui na Estônia, então ele será em inglês, mas depois, para quem assistir no YouTube, vai ter a tradução lá no YouTube para vocês. Beleza? Então, vamos lá, galera. Sem mais delongas, recebam... Anika Yars, neste momento, no Morning Crypto. Hello, hello! Ah, and, and, and it's like, I, I love your, your work. You know I'm a huge fan of yours. And thank you very much for being here today in Morning Crypto to present Startup Estonia to our Brazilian fellows. Uh, on the chat, they have a lot of questions for you. In a few instants, let me just mute the alerts because they they are like the people are going crazy in the chat right now. They are sending a lot of messages, a lot of audios, a lot of things. So, well, Anika, please introduce yourself. Uh, what mm -hmm. you do on Startup Estonia? What is your background? And let's talk about the startup ecosystem over here. A huge ecosystem over here. Sounds good. Yes. Yeah, so, bom dia. I know it's early. Oh, so bom dia. <laughs> so, I uh, it's it's great to be here. Uh, so, yeah, I work at Startup Estonia as a startup visa lead, and I just started actually last year in January, and one of the first person I heard about, even without before starting um, my current job was actually Edilson because uh, you are our the face of Startup Visa program. You are <laughs> in our slides, in the video, so uh, everybody knows and sees about you when, oh, thank uh, you very when much. we speak about the program. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, the Startup Visa program is a tool essentially for non-European startups to relocate to Estonia, such as, for example, Original Mai, but as well, it is a tool for local startups to hire talent from outside of the European Union. Um, so this is what I work with. Now we are also in, uh, in the middle of a process of creating a new program for scale-ups. So maybe I will speak about that uh, a little bit later. Uh, and yeah, before that, I used to actually live and uh, study in Italy. I did uh, foreign relations for nice. um, international uh, tourism and, and management. So I, I uh, have some experience there and uh, Italian language helps me to understand a little bit of Portuguese as well. Because the Latin, <laughs> the Latin roots of the both languages, yeah. Exactly. And, and so, last month, last month you, you were in Brazil, visiting Brazil and spreading the right. word of the Estonian ecosystem over there. Yes, this was so lovely. I uh, I really felt really nice connection with Brazil somehow as well as it was very similar to um, what I feel with Italy. So nice. it was lovely. I was in Florianópolis and Sao Paulo. Uh, lovely two weeks and we had such great feedback. And, and again, everybody knew about you already. So... <laughs> Uh, it's it's been uh, you've been doing great advocacy so yes the trip was really lovely and we hope to see you know more and more brazilians uh joining estonian ecosystem and uh we already see that that a lot of talent is coming to work for estonian startups yeah. uh, brazil so uh we are really happy about that but uh, i think a lot more can can be done yeah and it will it will we are we are advertising Estonia in, in Brazil and uh, I I hope soon we we can get even some people from the chat here in Estonia visiting and maybe incorporating their companies over here who knows who knows the future absolutely so I think that's you know and 
what I think is that, you know, we are not trying to steal anyone away, but it's really like maybe an option to, to scale. So uh, m many uh, companies still maybe don't have Estonia on their radar because Estonia is small and they don't think about this as a first choice, but actually it is a great country uh, from where to expand. So, sure. uh, but yeah, maybe I will show some slides. Oh, and talk please, a please share, share a screen. I will put in the, here. Okay. Oh, Jeff, Jeff is on the chat and he met you back in Brazil. I don't remember if it was in Sao Paulo or Floripa, Florianopolis, mm -hmm. but uh, Jeff met you and he's in the chat. Uh, Annika, I, lo I loved your seat. Explain to them where you are right now and what is the, this swing <laughs> you are sitting? Yes, I'm, I'm currently at this co-working space uh, called Latitude 59. Uh, uh, let's do it. That was my ops over there. I'm at Lift 99, it's a co working space in Teliskiri. It's like this really super cool area in Tallinn. But Latitude 59 is a cool conference that is coming up in May. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, then maybe it's uh, time to think about this. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Sure. But yeah, it's, and on my back is this uh, Wise logo, uh, one of the Estonian unicorns. And it has swings, so I can, uh, you know, swing around <laughs> during the presentation. <laughs> during the meeting, swinging during the meetings, it's amazing. It's an amazing place. So your Absolutely. your slides are on the screen, and let's go through them. Yeah, let's get into it. So just to get back to what what is Startup Estonia really, and uh, what what do we do? Um, Startup Estonia is really a governmental initiative. And it was started back in 2015, and uh, uh, the aim was to uh, help to boost the Estonian startup ecosystem and create more international success uh, stories. So back in 2015, uh, we didn't have too many uh, startups yet. It was like around 200 or 300, and the goal was to have by 2020 1,000 startups. And was it the, the start uh, of e-residence e together? It was the same year. If I'm wrong. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. It was the same year, but we have a lot of uh, collab definitely, and there is, uh, you know, a lot of common uh, ground. But uh, those two initiatives have been kept separately. But yeah, we but see what it really what, one interesting brings, thing you know? for for our, our audience would be mm -hmm. telling the difference between e residency and e startup. This probably will come uh, come into that that field, but uh, yes, it would be interesting. Okay, I will cover this. I think it's best to, if I talk about this when I talk about startup visa, so you understand maybe the difference. Yeah, um, let's go. But yeah, so basically like Startup Estonia uh, is making sure that uh, there is enough uh, funding available, uh, that startups uh, can raise money, uh, that the legislative environment is clear. That's like one of the best examples of it is probably the startup visa program that I will tell you about in a minute. And then also making sure that the ecosystem is collaborative and, and functional. And so, for example, that's what our community manager does and making sure that uh, uh, it's easy to um, share and um, get the information across. Um, but so if we look at the past year, it was pretty epic, like Estonian startup sector co keeps growing really fast, approximately 30% a year, and ha that has been going for the past years in the same sort of speed, which is, it's, it's like the fastest growing economy in the Estonian economy. 1,300, um, a lot. Of, oh my God. 1,300. Uh, 14 startups, so you see that we reached our, our goal, where we are uh, in 2022, but already by 2021, we had over 1,000 startups, so um, it's it's growing really fast, over 8,000 new jobs have been created, and we have seen that 80, every 87th person in Estonian workforce <laughs> is currently with startups, I think it's a pretty nice ratio. 
Um, yeah, and they, you know, they pay a lot of uh, employment taxes. Their turnover uh, has been increasing. Last year was 1.4 billion euros. And last year, Estonia startups raised 928 million euros. And already in 2022, we're in March now, and uh, there are already Estonian startups already raised more than 800 million euros worth of uh, uh, money. So, and we are only in March. So, I think it will be another record year, most likely. Um, so it's been going really well, and uh, it's and we are really proud of it. And obviously, the Estonian government is hoping that the startup sector will become one third of the Estonian whole economy in in the future. Right now, it's around one percent still. So there is a still a uh, uh, possibility to grow, but we see that it's happening already. Um, and just quickly to overgo like the who are we working with, like the definition of a startup can vary from countries to countries, but in Estonia it's written down in law. Um, and so in Estonia, startup is based in, te in technology, it's innovative, has a repeatable and scalable business model and uh, fast global growth potential. So that's written down and it's really clear. And so we know who we work with and, and who not. And especially for a startup visa program, it is important. Um, yeah, and here you can see also like the number of startups per 1 million population versus capital invested. Uh, so you can see that Estonia has 1,107 startups per 1 million people and the average in Europe is 237. So we are definitely the leaders in Europe. Um, and also here you can see the investments made to Estonian startups. So in 2021, we saw like another leap, 87, 86 deals were made, but in total 962 million euros were invested into the startup. So we can see that um, the investment size uh, uh, has grown, uh, even though the number of total investments has grown just a little bit. Uh, and yeah, and Estonia is of course uh, in the global top of unicorns per capita. So uh, now we have actually 10 startups uh, that are unicorns in Estonia. Um, so most of them are uh, located in Estonia, but two of them, Zigo and IDME, are actually also uh, are, are not based in Estonia, but uh, they are founded by Estonians. And uh, so that's something that we we are really proud of. And I think what's interesting in here is the, the ripple effect sort of that uh, you can see. So from Playtech and Skype, uh, one of the first employees later founded Wise and Bolt. Uh, so we can uh, definitely see that the knowledge has been uh, passed on and uh, and so more and more success stories keep growing. Yeah, one important and, uh, thing here, uh, yeah. just to mention, uh, the founders, the, the main founders of the biggest Estonian uh, startups they are investing in the, the 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 small ones just to like to to improve the the entire ecosystem. It's a, like a cyclic thing. It's very important over here. Yeah, definitely. And we can see like with the sales of Pipe Drive, for example, uh, it's estimated that about hundred new millionaires came to the market who were like invested, like interested into investing into new uh, startups. So that's definitely true. And also they like to say that, you know, in, Est in Estonia, it's really easy to uh, get knowledge uh, from those like successful unicorn founders and that the founders are still like open to go for a coffee with, you know, new people and get some ideas. So I don't know, like if you have had that uh, happen to you, but like, for example, the co-founder of Bolt, Martin Willik uh, says that he still likes to keep going on lunches with people who, you know, want to ask him questions. And, and and we have the Estonian Founder Society over here for the founders. So you apply, and if you are accepted as a founder, you will be you will participate in that. Uh, that let's not a club; it's a society of founders. <laughs> and we have a lot of meetings together, even with Martin Billig and others, uh, sharing their knowledge in many aspects. And one important thing. In this society, there's the there is no there are no investors at all, just for the founders where they can can met together and share 
their issues, their struggles, yeah. everyday struggles. It's very important. It's it's a very rich ecosystem because of those kinds of things over here. Totally, totally. So, you know, it's uh, a lot of knowledge that uh, is still, you know, kept around and accessible to other founders. And so it's like really favorable uh, place to be in because of how easy it is to communicate with, you know, the whole ecosystem really. Okay, and then just quickly, like the, one of the other reasons why I think like our uh, startups are doing so well is that we have a lot of support organizations, approximately 150 of them. Um, so if you go to Startup Estonia's website, you can uh, see all of them. You just choose what phase your startup is at and uh, you can seek out like what kind of uh, fundings are available, what which are the um, incubators or accelerator programs you could participate in where the co-working spaces and so on and so all of this information has been really visible and accessible and uh, so if you think about the ratio of 1318 startups and 150 support organizations it's it's pretty good there's a lot of support uh, available um, okay, and then the Startup Visa program. So the Startup Visa program was initiated back in 2017. And uh, back then it was mainly meant for Estonian startups who were like uh, struggling with hiring talent from outside of the European Union because of the you know quotas that were uh, available back, at, back then. Um, and so the program was created within 11 months. And uh, and, and then uh, into the program was also incorporated the, the possibility for non-European startups to relocate uh, to Estonia. So it's like one of the easiest, uh, cheapest and fastest visa programs in the world. So you can confirm that or... Yeah, uh, sure, totally. <laughs> um, and uh, probably I was one of the first people getting the startup visa over here. I think so. I think so. You yeah. were one of the first ones, and uh, and yeah. So it's like it really enables uh, quite easily to you know come to Estonia and and become and stay here you know for with the visa or the temporary residency permit. Um, so yeah, do you want to say how about your experience a, a little bit? Yeah, when I started over here. Uh, pr probably I, I know, and, and people from South Africa, they told me I was one of the first because even the immigration, like they were not prepared for receiving all the papers and understanding even the application number. I remember at that time, they didn't know when I was there applying in the borders, the, the immigration, the, they, they asked, oh, what, what is this application number? Oh, then I, I explained to them application is because I am applying as a startup. It's a new program from Startup Estonia, the Startup Visa. I was explaining to the, to the police over there <laughs> how, how it was working <laughs> because they didn't know. And today, all the forms, they incorporated the application number field just for, for doing the reference. So you are coming as a startup and as a startup, if you, you were approved, just put here your application number and everything is seemingly easier right now. At, at, on my time, it was harder, sure. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so, you know, since like uh, 2017 now, there are like over 4,000 individuals who have relocated to Estonia. So about almost 1,000 uh, founders uh, of them. And then like a lot of talent has come to work for Estonian startups as well with the startup visa program. So uh, that's cool that you, you know, you started uh, <laughs> this, you know, list of uh, so many people. So very special. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, how to get it is like, it's pretty easy. You you just have to go to Startup Estonia's website. You can take like a quick test to see if you're eligible. Uh, so what you need to, is to be a startup and have to have at least an MVP. Uh, and after that, you can like apply for this special status. And what is also special about Estonia that there is a, a special committee that uh, assess uh, this startup status. So it's not like some random people from the government or from, or from the police who don't know anything about startups, but for, like really experts from the ecosystem that evaluate. And then within 10 days, uh, the business idea is evaluated and if everything is okay you will get this special code 
And with that, you can just go to either, you know, police or uh, embassy and apply for a visa or temporary residency permit if you have already a company registered. So in here, like what is, what is um, you know, important when to, is to talk about the e-residency as well, you know, startup visa program is really uh, gives you the physical access to Estonia. So like Edelson, you can come to Estonia and live off from here and get to know all of these amazing people from the ecosystem. Uh, E-residency gives you the possibility to open uh, a company in Estonia virtually without ever having to be really in Estonia. Uh, so that's the main difference. You can still operate the company virtually uh, online with the help of e-residency. But if you want to actually physically be in Estonia, then that's the startup visa. What is the startup visa created for? And one important thing we need to mention, the startup visa is for the founder and for the founder's family as well, like to the spouse, to the uh, children and, and everyone related to the family. Yes, totally. So, you know, we understand that like nobody would want to just you know, come off alone. So a startup visa program, in fact, gives you the opportunity to bring your spouse and your kids. Uh, so, so yeah, that's uh, just, you know, part of it. And, and for founders, the requirements are fairly um, favorable if we look at the other uh, startup visa programs. Um, so um, what you will have is besides the, uh, you know, positive uh, decision by the committee is just to prove that you have enough money on your bank account to sustain for yourself for a year. I think it's around 2000 euros now. So that's, that's not so much. It's like a little bit over 150 euros per month. Um, so it's not too much. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. At the beginning, it's like, it's, enough you know to buy yourself noodles and sleep on your friend's couch probably yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you know that's that's the, that can be the start and it's fine you know you can focus on your business and not worry about money at the beginning so that's uh that's how it works um and now and you know in Estonia startups are the, until the age of when they are 10 years old after that we think that they are no longer startups anymore maybe they can become scale-ups and so for now for for that we are creating now a new program for scale up so you can apply for the startup visa uh, and the status is valid for five years and after that uh, you can apply for one more time until you become 10 years old and then after that you can apply for the scale up visa so and for that there are already like more special requirements but in 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 total, basically for 10 years, you can uh, live off from with startup visa in Estonia and you don't have to have. Oh, I'll live uh, here forever, I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> in the Great. programs, yeah, that's oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's how it's been in the making. And, uh, and you know, I, I think that uh, it's uh, it's really easy and uh, and it's a good place to really operate from. So I think for, for the audience of today, I would say that, uh, you know, Estonia uh, can be a place where you really like access the rest of the European, e European markets and uh, the rest of the world really easily. There is no bureaucracy. The ease of doing things is, is, is really nice. And um, so why not open a hub and, you know, with start a visa, you can like even hire talent from elsewhere as well, really easily. And so, yeah, I think like Estonian market itself is usually not very interesting to, it shouldn't be interesting to anyone. It's a great test bed, but uh, you know, a market of 1 million people is not that big. So, uh, you I need think to it's think great. global. Yes. You need to think global. European market is pretty good. It's like 500 million people in uh, in Europe. So a, a very nice sized market. And, you know, through Startup Estonia, you can access really like all of the sea level business people, advisors, government officials, whatnot. So, you know, even the Startup Visa program, like it was the startups came to us and said like, look, we have a problem hiring talent. We need more, please do something. And we made the Startup Visa program. So. I think uh, that's that's what's really favorable and, and nice for startups as well. Then uh, at the time, Startup Estonia is helping to bring the businesses and the founders. Um, for the uh, other aspects like like hiring people, uh, startup, uh, Estonia has another agencies to help people like work in Estonia. Can you 
talk a little about the other agencies that work together to help the ecosystem? Yeah, totally. So we do a lot of collaboration with both Central in Estonia and the International House of Estonia. Uh, both of them are like made uh, to help foreigners to settle in uh, into the life in Estonia. So there are like free language courses and like cultural uh, courses and meetings. Uh, even Startup Estonia itself is doing regular meetups for global founders. So you know we oh the global founders them. meetup that that's true yes. yeah. So we tried to, you know, like last time we made an event in Saunas and so like we, there was a training for pitching and after that, like, you know, key players from uh, the ecosystem and global founders came together. We went to Saunas and like, you know, they got to know more about like Estonian ecosystem. So uh, this kind of things are happening. International House of Estonia is offering Estonian courses. There's like language cafes. They help you to find the family doctor, whatnot, like every every issue that you may have, there are like free consultations and people helping uh, foreigners out. Um, so that's, I think, really nice. And uh, a lot of help can be uh, gotten from there once right. uh, the people arrive to Estonia. Nice. Uh, yes, and then like one more like product that's that important, important like, very important yeah. piece of information <laughs> right now. Yes, so if you go to startupestonia.e slash resources, uh, you can find 22 legal mod model documents that we have created together with six different law firms. Uh, so you can find things like cap tables, founders agreements and so on from there. And these are not only good to go in Estonia, but also in the rest of the Euro uh, European Union, because like uh, the legislation has to uh, match. So these are just free to use. Uh, we have had over 10,000 downloads. I think it's like one of the most popular products we have. Um, so uh, most of the startups use some of the uh, documents available there. So uh, that's a I use it a lot. I use <laughs> all the time. And those kind of legal documents, they like help you, uh, they start up to avoid some talks to lawyers in the very beginning stages, in the very early stages. But, well, talking to a lawyer, every startup needs to talk to a lawyer at some point. But for the very beginning, like, oh, I want to hire someone. I want to uh, talk to an investor to ha have, like, the term sheet, term sheet uh, sign it. Or the contract with the, the term, the, like, the, um, the loan. How, how, how you handle those information? Then you have a lot of templates in this website, startupestonia.ee slash resources. And they are very, very helpful and helps you to save some money in the very early stage of your company. Sure, totally. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, maybe oh, maybe there's like, a, that's one a, like fun story you have told me. I don't know if you want to share that with your audience, but, uh, you know, opening the company and that's maybe something we should include in the model documents is like how to do it. Uh, and, you know, how you uh, uh, ended up spending a lot of money to to open a bank account, uh, to open a business in Estonia, although maybe it wasn't necessary. Yeah. Uh, op opening the <laughs> business here, it was easy, but in my case, oh my God, yeah, Pro probably the audience, some someone in the audience already heard something, but what happened to me, uh, well, we know about Brazil and Brazil is very expensive, very bureaucratic. We need to go to notaries, we need to spend a lot of money with lawyers and everything. Okay, when we decided to come to Estonia, we were visiting and talking to some lawyers from a huge, huge office in Brazil. And then they said, oh, we will handle everything. Uh, it will be easy and nice. Then you go to Estonia. And we spent a lot of money with, uh, with <laughs> that office, like something about uh, $25,000 at that time. Then uh, they prepared like... They introduced me to Sorainen over here. And when I came to Estonia for the first time, I did everything by myself. They just reviewed the paper, but it was not uh, like opening the company. Then I came, then I was talking to first, first office at the time to open the company. Uh, I applied on a Fridays, uh, like 5 p.m. on the next Monday, 11 a.m., they called me and, oh, your company is open. 
here is your registration number, everything is fine, okay. And for the entire process, I spent something like 100 euros. And I didn't know, I, I, I really didn't know. I spent like $25,000 with the lawyers in Brazil and I didn't need to, to spend that money because I came to here. I did everything by myself and opened the, the company uh, by, uh, for like a hundred euros. Then I, after opening the company, I scheduled with the bank. Then I did the KYC in the bank. And two months after I had my bank account opened and everything was fine. So right. yeah, that's true. It's cheap, very cheap because, okay. Opening the company, uh, 100 euros for opening, but you should have a balance of 2,500, something like that. And now for who is like having the idea of bringing your crypto company over here, the laws in Estonia, they are changing for uh, blockchain and crypto related companies. And the licenses, I think two months ago, it was like 10,000 euros, something around that. And now it uh, like grew <laughs> a lot. So mm. the process uh, that, but uh, it's because the scammers and the fraudsters come into Estonia because it was easy and cheap to open a company over here. And then the government, they were looking, uh, oh, we don't like those kind of companies. So if you are serious and if you have a crypto company, you you need to have funds and ways to establish your company in Estonia. Yes. Yeah, I think Estonia is trying to be, you know, one of the first countries that really like regulates uh, this field as well. Sure. And so it's like they try to create, you know, a system in here. Um, let's see how it goes. But I think it's uh, it's you know important really to do it. But you know, you are saving uh, twenty over twenty thousand. Uh, oh my god! Uh, yes. So. <laughs> everybody that is listening so they will not have to spend that money anymore <laughs> sure. so yeah like in general in estonia like you can do everything online um the only thing you cannot do it uh, in estonia online is getting married and divorced and now they discuss about uh, getting divorced can be done maybe online as well so maybe you know in and in the future like uh, you you really can do everything online but uh, but yeah so everything can be done uh, and so, you know, we have e-notary even, so uh, with, you know, when you have, for example, investors who are also maybe e-residents, you can even, you know, do the uh, investment rounds without ever, ever having to fly anyone over. Yeah, uh, Jeff was sharing some fun facts on Brazil about Brazilian regulation. Uh, in 2014, a lawyer has made a book with all the accounting, just, just the accounting regulation in Brazil, come a book with a 7.5 tons of paper oh my god wow. insane it's insane <laughs> brazil is insane yeah so i mean like i don't know how long does it take you usually to declare your taxes they are pre-filled so to me it took like half an oh, hour oh declaring and... taxes over here oh my god it's so easy <laughs> it takes like 10 minutes per month just to uh to do the accounting of everything to the taxes and everything and a year we are spending over here something like 80 80 not 800 just 80 euros 80 euros uh, for the accounting service just to do the annual report and publish the annual report to the government something like that yeah Keep so it's like pretty usually data already so it's like it doesn't take too long at all and so yeah totally totally easy every can everybody can do it by themselves you know it's really easy okay um just also quickly over estonian startup database um, so estonian startup database gives an overview of all of the estonian startups so 1300 startups you can find there um, it's a great tool also for you know finding out partnerships finding out who might be the next uh, unicorn um, you can filter them out based on what sector uh, are they in what kind of technology do they use the stage they're at what's their employment count uh, how many taxes they have paid and so on so it's really like a great source and a place, great place to be in as well like once you're already in estonia uh, it's a great place where everybody sort of finds out about you. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Follow us on our, all of our social medias. Uh, you can. We have a really interesting podcast, uh, three seasons, uh, on our website, also on YouTube. And uh, definitely check us out. And if you have any questions, then I would be happy to take them now. Oh, nice. Thank you. And uh, we have some questions. Just, uh, I think just one, que two questions from the audience. And uh, people, if you have any questions, just drop it on the chat and I will bring it to the, to the presentation, okay? So, uh, Rip Magal, he asked it in Portuguese, uh, if the government becomes a partner of the startups you are bringing to here because the Chinese government does this kind of thing over there and they are interested to know if the government, the, the Estonian government becomes like a partner of the startups over here. <laughs> No, question. we actually don't do it. So I think like because how small Estonia is, like that would be really expensive if we started like investing directly into the startup. So we don't do that. What uh, what we do, what the government does is that they invest into those support organizations and then offers to support through them. Uh, they know more better than we do, you know, uh, who to support. And, uh, and so that's how the Estonian government works. We don't invest directly into any of the startups and it's very interesting because i i, I always uh, tell people in estonia the government acts as an incubator you are not i know you are not but you act as an incubator because of all the events the meetups the people you bring here to teach us a lot of lessons on how to handle how to manage people how to handle stress how to uh, make your mindset work together with your company and a lot of things. And you have a lot of events for us, the founders, acting like an accelerator uh, as an incubator. But you are not. So it, it's interesting yeah. because we can learn, we can grow. We have all the support from this government side as the Startup Estonia and other fields from the government uh, without uh, partnering the company. You are doing for the ecosystem. It's totally different compared to other countries. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best way to do it, really. Like, uh, And that's the most impact we can have, uh, rather than just pointing directly into the startups. Yeah. And the last one, oh my god. His name is Dr. Balotin. He's asking if you need a guy doing some bad jokes over here because he can send his CV because he's the king of bad jokes. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> the master of bad jokes over there. I don't know how to, to, to translate trocadillos, but I, as I know him, I will translate it as bad joke because it is, it is. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are so many job offers around, like, I think only Volt is hiring like 900 people. So, uh, you know, there are many open positions. So, you know, you can go to Estonian Startup Database and see all of the job opportunities. Maybe you can find something. <laughs> yeah, probably there, there is some startup over there asking for people or trying to hire some, some, some people just for doing jokes in their startup. Probably, probably. <laughs> That's a great job to have. <laughs> they, they said trocadillo is pun. pun. Like, mm, oh, nice. nice. Okay. <laughs> ah, my God. So, guys, I hope you like it because Annika is a very lovely person. And thank you very much again, Annika, for being here together with us and showing about your startup Estonia. I will invite you again sometime mm -hmm. to, to bring more information to people over here. And... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for your availability. Thank you so much, Edison. It's always a pleasure to do things with you. Last time we went to Portugal together, so I think, I hope so, something like this will come up again. Yeah, yeah, we traveled to Portugal together to show the startup stone yeah, and the ecosystem, Sonia ecosystem in Portugal as well. And it was a very nice travel. And as I said in the beginning, you went to Brazil to visit Brazil and spread the word about the Estonian ecosystem over there. And I hope, I hope we can bring more Brazilians to here. To this I ecosystem. think that would be great. Okay. Hope to see you all soon. Thank you so much and have a yeah. nice day. Thank you. Annika, just wait a minute. I will put them on a lounge. Then I'll come to you just a second. Okay. See you guys. Great.